the time of enslavement, darkness and violence. They risked their young lives on their shoulders. They were carrying Poland. Kwatery przydzielono nam we were assigned quarters at the higher firefighting school in Jolibor. It is still functioning today. The Germans drove up to our positions in a truck. We fired at them, and then they jumped out and fled in great panic. So we thought there must be something interesting there in that truck. Two of us jumped out, brought it to our position, and simply opened the gate and drove in. So we look and see it's full of grenade crates. This way, the Germans gave us about 4,000 grenades. In addition, our task was to patrol the Opel factory. At the time, it was a German plant where they produced or improved parts, even for aeroplanes, and Germans came there to take these parts. When German patrols came to take them, we attacked them, and in many such skirmishes, we were victorious, because, you know, they were cut off at the time. So we gradually acquired more and more weapons. We were supplying the platoon that we joined and joined platoon 226. Each platoon was numbered and the armband had WP for Polish Army in all caps. Underneath, there was the platoon number. Thus, our armbands read WP 226. <laughs> We were all armed in the end, until this period of romantic moments, so to speak of those fights only with German patrols, ended. They tried to force their way into Słowackiego street, and we would push them out. They were fired upon from both sides of the street. Well, they had to retreat with losses, you see, often leaving their weapons behind. But that lasted until mid-August, and then they moved us to the back, so to speak, on Mickiewicza Street, there behind Wilson Square, between Wilson Square and Invalidów Square. And there we stayed for a couple of days. And then we moved to Zajączka Street, to small houses. From there, we were to arrange an assault on Gdański Station. It was so decided to connect with the Old Town. The Old Town was furiously attacked by bombardment and fired with mortars and grenade launchers. It was also attacked by the German infantry. There was heavy fighting where the main forces of the Zoshka battalion within the Radoslav grouping were stationed. So we attacked the Gdansky train station and those tracks that led from the station. Unfortunately, there were whole nests of German machine guns, grenade launchers, mortars and even an armored train that ran back and forth along the tracks and fired from a cannon. So to capture such a position, you had to have heavy weapons and ammo to fire them. Only we didn't have any heavy weapons there. Maybe there were a couple of grenade launchers, but not enough because they had many more. And they also had mortars and cannons. Well, and those nests of machine guns that laid such heavy fire. Well, there was absolutely nowhere to take shelter. The attack occurred at night because they kept firing illuminating rockets in front of their position. They were still terrified that we were sneaking up to them through this foreground. So we ran as soon as the rockets went off and it was dark. When they fired the rockets again, we'd fall again and wait until the rocket light went off again. Then we'd get up and sprint forward. I was then armed with this rifle of mine. They gave me a bag with a bundle of bottles with flammable liquid, with which I was to set fire to the barracks at the Gdansky station. So here we were, moving forward, as there was only light shelling from the Germans for the time being. But after they finally saw us, or maybe they even let us get so close on purpose, that infernal, infernal shelling began. It was so dense that there was such a ceiling of fire about half a meter above the ground, there was no way to break through, because at best you would fall badly wounded. So it was terribly dense and incendiary. This shelling was mainly from machine guns, but also mortars, grenade launchers. This armored train also fired, so boom, 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 shells falling left and right. I fell to the ground and immediately got shot, hiding the bottles under me. So stuck there on the ground I was. 
Then I saw my colleague, who ran near me, had a light machine gun. He tried to take up a position with that gun, but he raised his head a little too high and got killed on the spot. So I knew he was lying dead under that infernal fire. We lay there for about an hour, I think. It lasted until, finally, it was beginning to dawn, so the shelling eased a little. Maybe they had already fired all the shells they had at hand. Then I see our commander, Tajo Huskovsky, crawling up to me, and he tells me we're retreating. Unfortunately, they defended, and we suffered great losses. So I say to the commander, here is Jendrek Dorschweinsky shot dead near me. I am wounded, but I still have these bottles with me. Throw them and then retreat. Come September, they defeated and captured the old town. Afterwards, they started the attack on Jolibos. Then, and their first series of these huge roaring cows was launched. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? They were these coupled rocket launchers. Six such rockets would be fired at once. The first series went into this block where we lived, destroying the roof. And the next day, the so-called Stukas bombers came and bombed the building. And I don't know why they focused fire on this building so much because there was no army there. That's when the caretaker and several tenants got killed. My parents then decided to move to a friend's place and I returned to my unit. Even though this wound was still not quite healed, I returned. At the time, my unit was in the back, somewhere in one of the colonies of the WSM on Krasinskiego Street. And we stayed there for a while and my wound had time to heal. When they moved us back to the front, this time to the Opel factory for the last few days. At the meeting of our company, the commander said, Dear soldiers, we were the unit that fought the longest in the Warsaw Uprising. Unfortunately, we must lay down our arms here in Wilson Square. And so ended our uprising. I don't want to repeat trivial things. Well, one lives for the homeland, after all. What does it mean to be a patriot? Well, to act for the good of your country. Young, free, idealistic. Thanks to them, we live in Poland, in a free Poland, out of gratitude for Poland. Subsidized by the Polish National Foundation.